Hello. Welcome. Live. Welcome to our live. Howdy, everyone. Happy Good morning. Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Welcome to the nursing school show. Christina. Ask us anything. I am Matthew. Nice to meet you. You can ask us anything. Probably <sighs> related to nursing school questions is what we're focused on here in the nursing school show. We so also answer life questions. We also answer life questions. So yes. questions, yeah. questions in the comments below. That would be great. <sighs> Good morning. How Jessica. is everyone this morning? Thumbs up. Anybody notice Happy that I face. took off my ties? You had to be here last week <laughs> to be part of that discussion. Woo! I'm mm. free. You did take them off. Took I them know. off last I'm night, cool right? Like you. Yeah. See? See? I'm cool like <laughs> Matthew, apparently. Cool people take off their ties on their sweatshirt. I did not That is exactly out. right. Now I'm here. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Everyone on Instagram, YouTube, and, and Facebook. Right now. I'm Facebook, glad you're loving it. Go ahead and shoot below in the comments whether you can hear us correctly. I had to restart the computer and all these things mm -hmm. happen. So let me know if you can hear us and we will get going. Uh, also, add any nursing school related questions down in the comments yeah. below and we will get to them. We have some questions already from previous ones that we weren't able to get to. Now, before we get started, yes. can I say just say a few words? Okay. Can I say yes. a few words, can, please? <laughs> can Christina say a few words? Go <gasps> ahead, Christina. So on YouTube, please, please, please. Oh, thank you, Renee. Glad you could hear us. Sweet. Good. On YouTube, please, over the next couple of weeks, watch out for some community posts that we're gonna be doing for some exciting new things coming up. So we have been working really hard. I did not know this. A lot of things. I did not know that this. That I will be posting about on our YouTube channel in the community posts. Ooh. All right. So Haley, thank you on Facebook. I cannot you wait. You can hear us. If you've been here for the past, how long have we been doing these lives? I think like six months uh, now. It's well, so we are funny. on episode I cannot, 40. I cannot wait. 44. Episode 44. So, yeah, of doing it weeks. Uh, roughly two times a week. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Up top. Boom. Look at us go. I can't. I still can't wink. Like after, what did you say? 44 episodes? 44 episodes. I practiced my wink and I cannot wink. <laughs> oh, well. Keep, stay tuned. Keep yes. an eye out so, on your community posts. If you're not yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button in YouTube. Hit the bell so Ding. you're notified when we do any community posts and whatnot. We do have things coming down the pipeline. So that'll be good. Pike or pipe? Pipe. Coming down the pipe. So coming when, down when someone the pipe. says like coming down the pipe, I always thought it was pike. Is it pipe? It's, I don't know. I always thought it was Coming pipe. down the pike. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. I can see your comment. Like, My eyes are better. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, except it's still, I mean, it's still swollen there. It's still you, a little You bit. can see it. I think you can see it more on Facebook than you can YouTube for some reason. It's kind of weird. Like, which angle of Matthew are you looking at? Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, or it's Facebook? It's right there. It's right there. It's like, yeah, it's slightly swollen. No, no. It'll get better. It'll get better. It'll get better. All righty, my friends, what do we got? Okay, what are got we ready to jump into questions, everyone? Yes. Ready and set and go. Let's just start with Renee. Do you have anything on mental health? Ooh, so good. Mental health. Okay. If you're a nursing SOS member, yes. We have some mental health stuff now in the fundamentals course. We just released a whole, like, a bunch of new videos inside of the fundamentals course inside the nursing SOS membership community. So that's there for you. Therapeutic communication um, is in there. And then we have our whole medication database inside the membership community as well with psychiatric medications. So that is so, so helpful. I cannot even tell you friends, if you are in nursing school, if you're taking mental health, so much of it is those medications and knowing, you know, which one is which, what do they do? What do you need to remember for each? What are the side effects of those? It's, it's just huge when you get to your exams. So that's why we did that. We have a full medication database for you with your segments there. We teach it to you. You don't need to just learn everything out of a textbook or everything from, you know, watching 
you know, your instructor read off a PowerPoint or something like, let us teach it to you. So you don't have to struggle with it yourself. So easy. We make it so easy for you. So if you're a nursing SS member, that is there for you inside the membership community. Now, if you are not, we do not have any specific videos that I can think of off the top of my head up on YouTube, but here's what I want you to do. When you are studying mental health, psychiatric and nursing school, really, I want you to still focus on the four key areas that we always talk about. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment and nursing interventions. Now, with mental health, the pathophysiology is going to be a little touch and go because oftentimes with psychiatric things, we don't exactly know what causes it. We have a kind of general idea, hypothesis or theory, but we're not specifically sure. So that might be a little shaky. Totally fine. Just do your best. Then you're still going to want to focus on the other three categories, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment and nursing interventions. What signs and symptoms for sure? What are you expecting to see? Then what are you going to assess for? For mental health, that's going to be pretty similar to the signs and symptoms. What are you going to assess for? It's going to be pretty similar. And then nursing interventions, what are you going to do about it? So I'm going to come in right here and yeah. say that, uh, George, you you said that I failed my med surge too. What's the best way to tackle the subject? Exactly what Christina is talking about. She's talking uh, about mental health, but the strategies cover med surge in general. So pay attention to this. Med surge, these topics are what you focus on. Also, Stacy, any helpful info to prepare for pediatrics? Same info, same thing. So I just wanted to make sure that you, you're aware. Pediatrics, anything med surge, um, mental health, which we all. were talking about, any disorder, all of this comes into these four main topics that Christina is talking about. Pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. We should like get a sign. Who is really good at calligraphy out there? Like, you know, like the really cool, like chalkboard signs or something like we should get a sign that this has like it all listed. So I don't know if you're really good at that, send me one because I will show it. <laughs> up here on the nursing school show. <laughs> Path of physiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. That's all. Like there's only four. So for mental health, for pediatrics, for med search, for fundamentals, if you're in fundamentals and trying to remember your ABGs or your fluid and electrolytes or, you know, the high level med surge disorders like stroke or diabetes or heart failure, the things you learn about in fundamentals, critical care, Focus on these four main categories, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Boom. All right. And what Stacey's uh, mm -hmm. talking about uh, mental health is rough, especially as far as knowing meds. So I know that we did mm -hmm. talk that yeah. in the membership community, we do have the pharmacology course that does have mental health meds. But yep. now that we're kind of delving a little bit into pharmacology, uh, again, closer related to those four topics for yeah four sections to study what are the four things to go through with met with farm with with medications and how to study pharmacology and how to study pharmacology let's just dive into studying so pharmacology the first thing that i want to make sure you do is to get the davis drug guide book i know there's other drug guides out there uh i like this one i haven't used other ones so i'm partial to the to this one i mean this is the same just this is the one versions. that you used um, this is the one I used in nursing school. It's got my cool tabs on it. Yep. This is the this is last edition year's. last year. And the edition this year is turquoise. We yeah. Hear? Yeah. Turquoise. Someone said on Monday that it's turquoise. Who was that? Prima Bella, probably. Probably. Turquoise. Um, and so this, make sure you have the updated one. Do as I say, not as I do. I do not have the updated one right now. <laughs> we need to get it. But this is from last year. It's from several years ago. <laughs> yeah, make sure you have the latest one. Yeah, because friends, seriously, um, it's crazy. Like, look the difference. So this one is from a few years ago. This one is from just last year. And you can just see even, like, I don't think they made the paper thicker. I think that they just added a whole bunch of new meds. I don't know. <laughs> it's so much thicker. They do, do you things, see that? right? They, they put in meds. They take out meds too. Uh -huh, so yeah, uh -huh. definitely you want the latest. And get the latest one. So yeah, that's step number one. Then step number two, make sure that you're breaking up your medications by drug class. So it, this is why I like the Davis drug guide here in the front section. You'll see, do you see these like red tabs here? I call it the red tabbed section. These are all your 
classes, classifications for medications. It actually says classifications on the side. So classifications, this will divide them up by pharmacologic or therapeutic drug class. And that's fine. I prefer you do pharmacologic class. If you need to do the therapeutic class, it's okay. Um, it will work kind of, um, but not entirely. But if that's the only way to go, if that's the only thing you can do, that's fine. Um, so drug classifications there. Make sure you divide your meds up by drug class. And then what you're going to do is walk through and learn the mechanism of action of that drug class, not the individual drugs. And here's why. The drug classes, the pharmacologic class of the medication, if multiple drugs share that drug class, then they all have the same mechanism of action. They all act the same way in the body. So that's what mechanism of action means. Mechanism of action means how does the drug act in the body? And all the medications within one pharmacologic class share the same mechanism of action, meaning they all work the same way in the body. So instead of learning 12 medications with like individually, if all those 12 medications belong to one pharmacologic class, you just have to know the mechanism of action of that class rather than each individual drugs. Because if you know the mechanism of action of the class, you will automatically know the mechanism of action for all the medications in that class. So cool, right? So that's how we do it. It's going to save you hours, literally hours. <laughs> So that's the thing with dividing it up between therapeutic and pharmacologic class. Pharmacologic class is preferred because that is kind of the gold standard for mechanism of action. All of the medications within one pharmacologic class will have the same mechanism of action. It's not necessarily true with the therapeutic class, but it's going to be similar. For the most part, they're going to be similar. So with the therapeutic class, you just have to be a little bit more careful. You will have to go through each individual medication and read under here. Let's find a good one. Let's find a good one. Mm, mm. See, I actually tab them with names. So this is furosemide. If you look under here under action, that's what you're looking for, a mechanism of action. It's just under here called action. You will need to just look at the action, the mechanism of action of each individual drug in a class. So like furosemide is a diuretic, right? The pharmacologic class is a loop diuretic. So all loop diuretics are going to share this action. But if you just look at the therapeutic class of diuretics, all the diuretics are going to be kind of similar to that. They might not act exactly as furosemide does, as a loop diuretic does, because that's the pharmacologic class. But diuretics are going to act similarly to each other. So just make sure if you are going based on the therapeutic class, you will have to read the mechanism of action for each individual drug just to make sure that it is close enough for you. Does that make sense? So that is really the best thing that you can do to categorize and learn your meds in nursing school is to make sure that you are learning the mechanism of action of the drug class, not each individual drug. Now, once you know the mechanism of action of the drug class, it's going to make it so much easier for you to learn everything else that you need to know about that medication. The mechanism of action and how it acts in the body will help you understand the side effects the nursing assessment for it, and the nursing considerations for it. So just like Matthew was saying, the sa in the same way we have four main categories for studying in nursing school, remember pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions, the same is true for pharmacology. We have the mechanism of action, the side effects, the nursing assessment, and then the nursing considerations. Nursing considerations are basically the interventions. The mechanism of action is basically the pathophysiology. What is happening? Now, I know it's not the same thing, but that's, that's how we compare them. So med surge, you'll focus on patho, pathophysiology. With pharmacology, you'll focus on the mechanism of action. So let's keep jamming on furosemide. For example, furosemide is a diuretic. It's a loop diuretic. It's going to kick out water. It's going to kick out, you know, water and fluid, electrolytes from the body, like nobody's business, right? Your patient's going to be urinating a lot with furosemide. It's a loop diuretic. 
So when you come over here to side effects, what would you expect to see? If your patient is offloading a ton of fluid and a ton of electrolytes, of course, we might see signs of dehydration. Dehydration. Might see low electrolytes. And you'll look, low electrolytes, hypocalcemia, hypochloremia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, all the low electrolytes. So that is why understanding the mechanism of action will help you critically think through everything else you need to know about the medication. Does that make sense? That is how we study pharmacology. Know the mechanism of action of the drug class first. Know the mechanism of action of the individual drugs if you have to. And then compare that mechanism of action to the side effects, to the nursing assessment, to the nursing interventions. Now, I know I didn't jam on assessment and interventions. I know we got a lot of questions, but yeah, I hope I got my point across. That is great. Yeah. So really for med surge, whether it be any disorder or mental health or pediatrics or what have you, the four main topics there, patho, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, nursing interventions. Yep. And then for uh, farm, the mechanism action. Yep. Uh, side effects, nursing assessment and nursing considerations. Hey, I know it. Yay. Hooray! Good job. I figured it out. Nice. All right. Yes. So a plus for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Send Matthew a trophy. <laughs> I I am a trophy person. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so uh, jamming on that a little bit more, uh, mm -hmm. Teffy, I think this was actually from, from a previous um, Ask Me Anything, uh, said that they work 48 hours a week. They pass for a semester by one point and it's starting second semester in January. So they just want any advice to tackle med surge and pathophysiology, mm -hmm. which we talked about med surge are those four. And then specifically he called out or Teffy called out pathophysiology. Mm -hmm. So uh, just specifically, I know that we've had questions of this in the past, how to study pathophysiology. Yeah. So pathophysiology, what I always like to do is break them up in steps. So for pathophysiology specifically, let me get my books here to show you. Show and tell time. Show and tell time. Hang on one second. I've got about a thousand nursing school textbooks, right? You do too. And I'll show you my system for it. So here's how I studied in nursing school. I recommend that you have two types of textbooks. One high level textbook and one what I call a deeper dive textbook. So high level, this is my favorite for high level. Take a screenshot of it if you're not familiar with this series. It's the Made Incredibly Easy series. They've got a gazillion books for nursing school. Dose calc, assessment, fundamentals. I'm sure they have med surge ones. This is patho. It's also helpful. So Pathophysiology Made Incredibly Easy. This is a high-level overview book. It will give you a very good general idea, like a good starting point on what's happening with, with each of the disorders. Now, this one, the Merck Manual. <laughs> See the difference? <laughs> this is a deep dive book, the Merck Manual. This goes into like cellular level, chemical level, enzymes, like what is deeply happening in the body with those disorders. High level overview book is a lot thinner than a deep dive book, right? This will also cover a lot more disorders, but the Merck manual is really good. If you need to go deeper, you want to understand on a deeper level, what is actually happening in the body on a chemical level, cellular level, what's happening with the enzymes, receptors, all those things. That is the Mark Manual. If you just want a general high-level overview, this one. So good. So I recommend that you constrain your studying to these two types of books. It doesn't have to be this one exactly or these exactly, but something like it. These are just the ones that I really love and I really recommend. So screenshot time. Screenshot it. Yay. While you guys are screenshotting, Renee, uh, Screenshot. if you go ahead and email us, uh, hello at nursingsos.com, uh, email us from the email that you're signed up with the membership so we can look at your account and see what's going on. Uh, I don't know why you don't see all of Fundamentals course, but there's a lot in there, not just theories. So. Oh, weird. Yeah. I don't see anything else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Renee, just uh, let us know. 
Um, let us know so we can make sure you have access okay. to everything. Thanks. And then uh, Nicole will also walk you through, or Marilyn will also walk you through um, the uh, the meds for psychiatric. We will get those to you too. Make sure you have access to everything. Yep. Yeah, including your email, what you're looking for, and they'll help you out. Yep. Um, okay. So Mark Manuel, patho, physiology. Um, really, 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 I highly recommend that you constrain your study time to those two. Um, two types of textbooks. It could be other textbooks if you find one that's like a good high level overview and a good deep dive one. It doesn't have to be these two specific ones. These are just the ones that I like. The Mark Manual and Patho made incredibly easy. So there you go. Um, now, if you are a Nursing SOS member, we do this for you. So for pathophysiology, you guys know me. If you've watched us on YouTube, if you've watched any of our lives here, if you've watched any of our stuff, <laughs> like you know how I teach. And how I teach is exactly how we teach inside the membership community as well. So we really like to break things up into very simple steps for you to follow step by step. Literally nursing school, step by step. And that's how we do patho. This is how we teach. So if you're inside the membership community, you do not have to spend a thousand hours reading your textbooks because we put it, we give it to you in steps for you to follow, to understand the patho faster. Like we do the hard work for you. All you need to do is watch a video. So if you're a nursing assist member, just make sure you go to your dashboard and uh, check out the patho videos we have in all the med surge courses, cardiac, respiratory, renal, GI, neuro, endocrine, critical care. What am I missing is med surge. Did I say neuro? Um, integumentary. What am I missing? We've got all of them there. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah. Like burns, I, integumentary, um, critical care. We've got sepsis. Oh, we've got you know, blood transfusions and we've got, you know, heart failure and cardiac course and diabetes and DKA and glomerulonephritis and all the things. GIGU. Did I say that? I don't know. Fundamentals course in there too. Care plan course pharmacology course <laughs> got it all got it all i need like a list yeah we need like we, do we need, need a, a sign for that too so if someone's making me a sign out there <laughs> with my four main categories make me a sign with everything in the membership community too because we need like a here's everything we got so i can like reference it and not forget also if you're <laughs> you're interested in learning more about how christina teaches we do have a boot camp up that has mm -hmm. keep forgetting a topic but it's a good topic three somethings <laughs> three somethings if you want to learn about three somethings go ahead and sign up for the boot camp it's the top three study mistakes that you are making in nursing school probably that's one of them is not remembering things i'm gonna help so, you solve there you go that's so funny i do help you that boot camp is so good i help you learn how to study it's it's so so good so go sign up right now nursing school of success.com forward slash boot camp Boot camp. Boot camp. Boot camp. Okay. Let's do boot camp. <laughs> Onward and upward. Let's just leave that alone. Okay. I am so cool. All right. Uh, let's jam on note taking. Okay. Megan's asking the best way to take notes in class. Uh, and the side question, do you recommend rewriting them after class to shorten them? So I just want you to go over just your methodology for taking notes in class. Christina has a specific methodology of doing it, which do. works like a charm. It does work like a charm. And I am going to reference, we do have a whole YouTube video on my exact note taking process in nursing school. If you go to da, 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 YouTube, go to youtube.com, search nursing SOS note taking. Nursing SOS note taking, search that on YouTube. That will pop up for you. So check it out. Um, for notes, I'm going to hit some really key things that I want to make sure that you are doing in nursing school. Number one, make sure that you are taking notes in class, online classes, whatever. So if you are in class online on your computer at home. Like that's what I mean by in class <laughs> now, right? Whatever lecture you have or whatever PowerPoints or whatever your instructor gives you, take notes on that stuff in one color of a pen. And then when you go to your textbooks or whatever other information you use, YouTube channels, what have you, membership from us, 
Then you will take notes in a separate color, different color. So let's say you use one color, black pen, like a black pen for the notes you take in your lecture class. And then you use a blue pen for the notes you take out of your textbook or out of a video you watch, something like that. That way you know which notes came from where. Because what your instructor says in class, if it, if it conflicts, if it conflicts with anything else, you wanna make sure that you are showing that up and asking your instructor about it, right? So just make sure that uh, you take notes in two different colors. One color you'll use for the notes you take in lecture class, whether it's in class or online, doesn't matter. And then a separate color for the notes you take out of a textbook. Got it? Good. Now, the next thing I highly recommend when you're taking notes in, taking notes in nursing school in class is that you are taking as many notes as possible like all of them, if you can. I highly recommend just writing notes as fast as you can, making sure you're trying to catch everything that the instructor says. This is really helpful because like what we've always said, what your instructor talks about in class is most likely what's going to be on your exam. So you want to know everything. If you can record lecture, that's great. Record lecture. If you need to get together virtually with other students in your class to can, uh, what's, what's the word? Like condense all your notes into one or, um, I'm missing a word. Um, put it all together, put all your notes and co combine. That was the word combine all your notes together so that, you know, maybe someone else in your class caught something that you missed. Maybe you caught something that they missed. If you combine all your notes together, you all have everything. That's highly, highly, highly recommended. Uh, to do that, I highly recommend a Google Doc. So try to uh, use if you have Gmail account or whatever. This is free, right? Like yeah. Google Docs yeah. are free for Gmail. Um, on on Gmail, just go in like your Google Drive. I don't know, Matt, you could tell you. Go in your <laughs> Google Drive under Go Google Word Doc. Google Docs. Yeah, something. it's just like Google that. Docs. It's yeah. basically the Google Google version of Word. So there you go. a lot of people can go on it at once and be typing at the same time. And it's a really good way to collaborate and kind of all take notes together. There you go. So, so yes, if you are wondering if you should rewrite your notes after class, that would be a good way to go. If you take notes in class, rewrite them onto a Google Doc, and then have other students in your class do the same thing on one Google Doc, then you all have the notes from class, right? They're all in one place, which is so nice. So that is what I recommend. Again, go to youtube.com and then search nursing SOS note taking. Mm, yeah. Yeah, we you'll go see into, the full go into details the there thing a follow-up yep. question from megan was mm -hmm. what is the most important information what is the most important information moving forward after farm to know what so, is the most important I, information moving forward after pharmacology to know depends on what classes you're taking after pharmacology. <laughs> <laughs> that's really the thing i mean oftentimes you'll take pharmacology with like fundamentals or med surge like beginning med surge so then i mean after that then you do like advanced med surge or critical care or something like that or maybe your specialties and that's the most important information to know so really it depends on what classes you have <laughs> yep uh what's it? obero aria can you help over medical oh, yeah. surgery, uh, mm, medical surgical yeah. uh, nursing subjects? So we actually just talked about that at the beginning yep. of this live, talking about med surge and pediatrics and um, mental health specifically on the topics to study or the way to study and how to study and it how all. to study it all. So yep. So yeah. um, those four key things: remember pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, nursing assessment, and nursing interventions. Four key things. There you go. That's how to study med surge. <laughs> Awesome. There you go. Da, 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 da. I'm currently watching your dose calc video. So helpful. Thank you. I'm glad. Yay. Yeah. Uh, We've got lots of dose calc. Cherokee, on excellent advice on taking notes. It mm -hmm. works. It works. It works. And then uh, I'm glad. 
Hi, Christina and Matthew. It's the first time I've watched your live. I so appreciate how clear and passionate you explain the concepts to us. I'm going to start my first semester of ADN in spring 2021. Yay! Hooray! Now, I know different schools start spring. Like, the, your terms are a little bit different depending on where you are or where you're at in the world. Um, does, like, spring for you mean January or does spring mean, like, April? Because <laughs> it could be different depending <laughs> on if you're in a semester school. Or, mm. like, spring, right, can start in January Yeah, for spring semesters. is usually, yeah, spring is usually January-ish. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. Hooray. Yay. So, when you start nursing school, like we always say, the number one thing you need to be focusing on, if you have not started nursing school yet, is dose calc. Dose calc. Friends, how important is dose calc? If you are in nursing school right now, how often do you have dose calc questions on your nursing school exams? Always, right? And da, 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 when you start nursing school and like every term in nursing school, you need to take a dose calc exam in order to stay in the program. And not only that, you need to take a dose calc exam and you need to get 100% on it to stay in the program. So if you are sitting here right now and you have not started nursing school yet, I highly recommend that you start practicing dose calc. Please. Jasmine, it's you, you asked a little life. earlier, what materials do I need when starting nursing school? This, this is, is it. This is for this you. This is it. This is for you. Dose calc. Dose calc. So if you are just starting nursing school, make sure that you fully understand dose calc so that you are not running around like a crazy person <laughs> crazy crazy rushing everywhere overwhelmed and confused and stressed the first two weeks of nursing school because you have no idea how to answer a dose calc question and you have a exam coming up that you have to get 100 percent on in order to stay in the program so uh, Don't be that person. TM, uh, I start my AVM program in January, and that's what I'm doing now. Perfect. Great. And then Katie, Dose Calc is everywhere. Just got my packet for review for my adult health math comp in January. Yep. Perfect, Katie. That is great. Yep. Yep. Let us know if you have questions. You can submit a tutor form if you're a Nursing SOS member, everybody. Uh, Stacy's asking, when are we opening back up the membership? Mm -hmm. Best way is to get on our wait list so you're the first to know. When so we open nursingschoolsuccess.com slash join will lead you to the wait list mm -hmm. form thingy to sign out. So if you have not done that, be sure to do that. You'll be the first to know when it does open. Yep. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, let me see here. What does Starbucks put in their coffee? What does star caffeine? Yeah, but is it like super caffeine? I feel like there's no. been rumors about that. Well, I mean, there's there's different things online that show like how how, how much caffeine, caffeine content. Yeah, caffeine content for each thing. Mm -hmm. And different uh, coffee places have different amounts of caffeine. So, so where does Starbucks land? Because Kinda I feel like I am not the same person <laughs> drinking my coffee. So if you home. notice, we do not have Starbucks this morning. We have water. Which is good for you too, by the way. Water is Which good you're for probably you. wondering, hey Christina, where's your coffee? Because you always have coffee and you are right. And I already drank it at five o'clock this morning That's when what I was awake with my kids. That's what happens when they wake <laughs> up and will not go down. When they wake up early, <laughs> we drink coffee early. So I'm just I'm not the same person. When I drink coffee at 5 a.m. <laughs> then if I drink Starbucks later and then do the live. I have not had my coffee yet today, I, so I'm looking forward to that. Almost feeling like I'm crashing. Right that now. is going to happen right after this live, by the uh, way. So I am going to make an eggnog latte oh, because so holidays mm -hmm. and we can do that. So... Holiday coffees are so good. Hey, friends, what is your favorite holiday coffee? Oh, yes, I would or like to know. Or holiday drink. So I actually do not like the eggnog latte, but I do like holiday drinks. Peppermint mochas are my favorite. <laughs> I was working at your computer last, last week or the week before, and I reached and grabbed his coffee accidentally eggnog. and drank it, and it was disgusting. Eggnog. <laughs> So not gross. true. It is great. <laughs> so yucky. <laughs> I do not 
like eggnog. The holiday Lattes. blend at Starbucks, everyone swears by that. I don't think we've ever had it. I don't think we've ever had it no. either. We're more of the espresso dark roast kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but yes. Like French roast. Yeah. Yeah. They're French Verona. Roast. We like the Starbucks Cafe Verona, Verona one, I think, is our favorite one. Yeah. Yeah. Peppermint mocha. Peppermint you mocha. You know what? If you're willing to try something that's all the way kind of holiday ish, Renee. I think it's kind of holiday ish. Uh, white chocolate mocha with a pump of raspberry. Wouldn't it be a cranberry to make it more holiday? -ish? I don't know if they have cranberry. Do you they, they can have try cranberry? cranberry. I always do with raspberry, but Ooh, maybe someone. Yeah. Someone try it as a cranberry. <laughs> Does Tarani make cranberry? I'm sure they do. I'm sure they that do. They like make all thing. sorts of things. They make everything. <laughs> You can get like garlic, I'm sure, in a coffee syrup. You. <laughs> well, I'm sure that someone. I'm, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure they, sure they have. Someone has something. <laughs> I uh, don't know where we went off the trail on that one, but. Well, I just I that was my question. Yeah, okay, because that was... I feel like I'm just I'm subdued. Here's a fascinating thing: Is caffeine in the Davis's drug guide as a drug? That's a really good question, friends. And what is the mechanism? Act Hang what, are, on. what are the four things? What are the mechanism actions? What I are doubt it. the side effects? We all know the side but... effects of that. Uh, what are the nursing considerations? And what is a nursing Man. assessment? I don't know. I was just curious. So we were talking about farm Calcium a little earlier salts? and to use Davis's drug guide. So. Calcitonin? Is caffeine something that I usually prescribe to people? Maybe not. I don't know. It's going to be in the back. Let's see. Thank you all for joining us, by the way. We're <laughs> going on a little tangent We're adventure. We're on a tangent adventure. We're going on an adventure, so join us along with this join adventure. Us. Hey, um, a couple of things. I do have some really exciting things in my mind <laughs> that I'm going to be telling you about over the next couple of weeks. So make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And you hit the notification bell. There you go. To get notified. Because I'm going to be posting and like the community posts, I think. Letting you know of some updates and things you definitely don't want to miss. And right now, Christina's looking to see if caffeine is in the drug guide. For those new, welcome to the Nursing School Show. Know. It's Christina. She's looking up Hi. caffeine. I'm Matthew. We usually answer nursing school questions, but right now we're answering yeah. our questions of whether caffeine is in the Davis's drug I guide. I was right. It's in the back. It's in the back. Okay, so who's like me and you have to repeat the alphabet in your mind every single time you try Sing to the look song. at the index Sing the song. of a book? Because I don't actually have the alphabet memorized. <laughs> I tell you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's under natural stuff. Here natural we go. things. Um, oh no, caffeine, caffeine, caffeine. Hmm. Oh no, it's under the pediatric quick reference thing. That's pediatric? I no, no. Okay, <laughs> no. To answer your question, no, it's really oh, not okay. the drug guy. All right. All right. That is so funny, though. What a great question. Yes. What a great question to ask Wednesday morning. <laughs> hey, by the way, we will not be here next week. We forgot to mention that at the beginning. We did not mention that. I thought we were mentioning that at the end. But oh, I don't okay. Know. I Whichever. forgot. Yeah. We're not going to be here next week because it's Christmas. It's Merry Christmas, Christmas everybody. We're going to take a week off, and then we will be back with you the week after, which is like... Before New Year's. Before New Year, right? Because yep. Christmas is on a Friday. Am I right? Christmas is on Friday, and then the week after is one of my favorite weeks of the whole year. Like, the last week of the year is the best for people like me who love thinking about the future. I love to make goals for the next year, and I want you to love it, too. So we'll probably talk a lot about that. Trying to figure out how to have a life in nursing school how to ace nursing school, all of those things. We're going to talk about it the week before the new year. <laughs> so not next week, but the week after, the last week of the year, Monday and Wednesday. It's going to be so great. Ooh, I like this question. And I'm, I'm writing it down so I can read it. But Hannah has a question. I start in January. Any strategies on how to approach group projects in case we have a slacker? And in... <laughs> 
in parentheses, <laughs> there's, or maybe I'm worrying about nothing. No, you're definitely worrying about nothing. <laughs> that's a valid, that's a valid concern, my friend. <sighs> you know, um, I don't know. Like I could say that it's a valid concern, but here's the thing. Like if you're in nursing school, I think most nursing students really are dedicated to doing things to doing things, right? To like actually doing work because nursing school is a lot of work. And, you know, if you get put in, you know, if you have to do a group project, which you most likely will, um, people are going to put in the effort. They're going to put in the time. Now, what we talked about before is really the biggest thing that helped us with group projects is that Google Doc. Make sure you have access to Google Docs where everyone can collaborate and you can all combine your stuff. Everyone can collaborate together, you know, um, divide up the work. Make sure you're dividing up the work clearly and everyone has very clear expectations about what they need to do. Step number one, I should have mm. mentioned that first. Make sure everyone has clear expectations about what they need to do. There should be like no confusion at all about what everyone needs to do. And then once you've divided up the work, everyone's really clear on what's expected of them. Then you can go to Google Doc, create a Google Doc and divide up the work and make sure that everyone uses that Google Doc together and everyone can see where everyone else is at. Everyone can, you know, it's kind of like almost like, okay, put your work in here. And then everyone is kind of keeping each other accountable. Does that help? This is, yeah, is, this, like Shelley, yeah, oh, this is Hannah. Hannah's question. Yeah, that's Hannah. Okay. Hey, Hannah. So starting in January. So what we're saying is just before this is definitely focus on dose calc. It mm -hmm. looks like you're, you're kind of worried about group projects, which you said that for the most part, you guys have group projects, right? In nursing school. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did have group projects. Yeah, so I think that those those topics are really a, a good way to go. Um, yeah, it's um, it depends on you know obviously who you get together with. Um, ours really weren't that bad. I mean, yeah, I did have some better experiences than others, depending on who was who I was paired with and how we worked together. Because that's another thing, too. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, someone's, uh, you know, not doing their work or anything. But sometimes you just don't, you know, it's you don't have that like chemistry together. Right. So um, like my last term in nursing school, we were like the dream team. <laughs> I was paired with another girl in um, our, our program to do like our last like final cumulative project thing. And man, did we crush it. Dream team. If you're watching right now, you know who you are. <laughs> Love you, friend. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So it depends. So definitely something to consider. Don't and worry about I it, though. Yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much Cross about it. Cross that bridge it. when you get there. Um, yeah, I, I like the collab working, and we do a lot of collaboration working on various technological things now. So yeah, definitely Google Docs to keep all the stuff all combined. Mm -hmm. um, meet often. And... Yep. Open lines of communication. Yep. Those are the big ones. Uh, Savannah had a question there. Like, do you recommend buying books like the ones you're suggesting? So we were suggesting a couple books earlier this live. So do you recommend buying the ones you're suggesting if your school doesn't recommend them? My school recommends different books. So I think there's a slight difference between not recommending them at all, like saying, no, do not get those versus they just have their other ones that they, they prefer. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, do you have any insight on that i think the biggest thing is if you have um let's see for example i've got so many textbooks my friends um like mental health books or um let's use this one as an example the the care plan book this is a care plan out book i always recommend but if you have one that is similar that your school recommends you do not need this one if it's similar like this one has the Nanda diagnoses in the front and it walks you through care plans, you know, for all the diagnoses. If you have what book that's similar to this, then you don't need this one. But if you don't, highly recommend getting it. The same thing for the Davis drug guide. There's like a bunch of different drug guides out there. And if you're listening here to us on these lives or in our YouTube videos and you see me using this book, 
as long as your drug guide book does what this one does, then you don't need this one. But if it doesn't, if it is lacking, if it doesn't have the medication classes, if it doesn't have all these like sections here to, I don't know why it wouldn't, but if it doesn't for some reason, mm -hmm. then I would recommend getting this one. You see what I'm saying? So does that make sense? That was Savannah, right? Yes, that's Savannah. Savannah. So I, it, that's kind of a yes or no, or it depends answer. You know, I just want to make sure that you get the information that you need. And so if your textbooks that your school is recommending are lacking, then yes, I would highly recommend getting these ones, especially this one, especially this one. Um, also, um, also these two. Merck Manual and the Pathophysiology Made Incredibly Easy. The Merck Manual is actually online. If you go online, uh, Merck Manual, I don't know, just Google Merck Manual. <laughs> I don't know what their what their website is, um, but it's just Google Merck Manual. Make sure you're looking on the professional version and not the consumer version. So you get the actual professional stuff. Um, but these two books are really nice. Um, but yeah, like I said, the Merck Manual is online. So don't go out and buy this if you don't want it. I like having it, but that's just to me. Hey, someone asked if I had a stethoscope earlier, right? Yeah, that's Dre. He comes in every once in a while and just asks what kind of stethoscope to use and what stethoscope. He's Hi, Dre. They really like stethoscopes, apparently. I and we've answered it. This one. Well, I mean, I don't have it with me now because it's upstairs for when I'm, you know, on the floor. Um, but it's this one, MDF. I have the box down here. It's so pink. Could, it's pink. You it's can pink. Take, take a picture of that sticker right there if you want. I don't know if you can see it, but like it's MDF. MDF and it's hot pink because obviously, <laughs> obviously. Be sure to check with wherever you're going if they yep. have rules and regulations on what color it should be. But if they do That's not have point. any rules or regulations, I, I'd recommend pink or orange. <laughs> Because our favorite colors are pink and orange. Yes, they are. According to our children. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, genuinely, they are pink and orange. <laughs> except the only thing that's a little different with our with our three-year-old is that if his favorite color is something, then it cannot be your favorite color. And since daddy's favorite color is orange, no one else's favorite color so, can be orange. So, sorry, guys. Orange Just... is only my favorite color. <laughs> yeah. Not anyone else's. That's it. <laughs> yep. All right, uh, Elizabeth had a question, and Mashinigui had a kind of a similar. I know it's hard to read. Sorry, like sorry Instagram about handles. names, uh, but anyway, um, I wanted to kind of combine these two questions. Elizabeth, first, I'm not sure whether or not to be a nurse. I'm currently enrolled in an RN program and should start in January, but I just mm. don't feel excited about it. Should I try out another medical career before nursing? And then on the other side, um, the other person was saying, hi, I am a registered nurse, but I am not proud to be a nurse. Please your help so as so I can be excited about it. So hmm. I, I like these and I wanted to put these two together because one is from one end just starting out, but not sure if they should go into nursing field. One is in the nursing field, but um, maybe not feeling so excited about it right now. So what they can, they can do. So uh, this goes a lot into mindset i believe is a lot of it and mm -hmm. we're we're really big about mindset here in, on this channel so we'll probably dive into that a little bit but do you have any thoughts about both sides of those people some that's going to nursing or whether they should start another career before nursing or if you're already a nurse and you're not as excited about it anymore those are great questions um the first thing i want to say is that nursing is such a beautiful profession in that you can really do so much. I mean, what other profession out there can you get one degree and then literally work just about anywhere? I mean, if you didn't want to work on a med surge floor, you don't have to. You can go be, you know, like, like I say, like there's, um, I've always wanted to be a mother baby nurse or lactation nurse to help mamas feed their babies. It's beautiful, right? You could do that. You could go into labor and delivery. You can do, go do critical care, flight nursing. If you don't want to do, you know, like trauma nursing or anything like that, you could, you know, work in a clinic. 
Or, you know, you could go be, I'm, I always get this word wrong, but is it esthetician <laughs> where you do like Botox injections? You could do that. There are so many different avenues. You could be like a, yeah, a, a patient advocate, right? Where you just help patients understand what's happening. It's beautiful. You know, there are so many different avenues, like diabetes educators or, just, you know, educators for patients. You don't have to do something if you don't want to do it, right? Now, it's a little different in nursing school. You will be put in clinicals, depending on wherever you want to be uh, or where wherever they want you to be. And so clinicals, you know, you'll have med surge experience, you'll have ICU experience, maybe you'll have, uh, you know, wherever they put you, mental health experience, pediatric experience, you're going to get a lot of different clinical experiences. You might not like them all, and that's okay. However, you might find some things that really, really jam with you. Like, that really is something that you could see yourself doing for a long time. And, but you wouldn't know that unless you try it, right? So I would be open to the possibility, be open to the possibility and tr try different things, you know, just be open to it. If you really think that it's not where you want to be, if you're really not excited about it, I would still say, I mean, you are accepted into the program. I'm talking to, who was this? This was Elizabeth, Elizabeth right? Yep. If you're if you are not excited about it, but you are accepted into the program, I mean, you might as well try it, right? What else have you ha do you have going on? I mean, you've already planned for this, I'm assuming. You know, what else do you have going on over the next three to six months? Um, you know, if, if you just want to try it, I say go for it. See how you like your first, your first term in nursing school and then go from there. So also I want to point out, friends, that it's not for everybody. Nursing is not for everybody. So many nursing students, this happens all the time. You will hear this all the time. Nursing students starting nursing, stu nursing school and dropping out in the first term. It is not necessarily because they failed out. A lot of those cases where they just decided that's not what they wanted to do. That's okay. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. Not everyone wants to be a nurse. Yeah, definitely. So I think a core part of this is the excitement, the feeling of excitement or motivation or passion, what have you about it. So um, you, you obviously applied for nursing school and uh, what's the reasons for that? You want to get in touch with that and really circling back around, really get in touch with your why. And that goes for people that are entering nursing school or the other side that is a nurse, but not as excited about it is really reconnecting to your why. So you did apply for nursing school. So why did you apply to nursing school? And is that the why is that why still matters to you? Uh, if it does, if that's really your why reconnect with that, that might spark something. Even if it doesn't, if that why is really what you're hanging on to and that why makes sense to you still, then continue on because I've said this before, motivation or passion, those things come and go. And I think that's a little countercultural now that you have to be passionate about something like 100% of the time or else you should go do something else. Or you have to be motivated. Or you have to be something. motivated about something 100% of the time or else it's just not for you, right? But really, that's not the case. We go through phases. We go through ups and downs in life. That's just the nature of things. So is it just that your, your nerves are getting the better of you since you're starting so soon, that's totally fine too. Mm -hmm. So if you reconnect with your why and decide, yes, that why really makes sense to me and I'm just not feeling it now, like Christina said, you're already accepted. Go ahead and go through it. Your motivation, your excitement may come back or you just might find something about yourself in that first term. And again, it's not for everyone too. Mm -hmm. So if you're in it and you decide, you know what, this, this, my why has changed, my situation has changed and I don't think nursing is for me. If you need permission from someone else, maybe uh, maybe other people are saying, well, you're already accepted. It's a good career. You should do it. If you need permission from someone else saying, you know what? It's not for everyone and it might not be for you. You can have that permission from us. Go ahead and try it. See if it aligns with your why. But if not, and if it's not for you, it's not for you. And that's fine. That yeah. is that is totally okay. Absolutely. I would really, I'm going to add just this last thing. Um, really just make sure that you're praying about it. Because if 
God wants you to do something. Like for me, at least, I mean, I, I just know, like you could just feel it, you know, like you just feel it. Like this is something I'm supposed to do. I don't know why, but I know it's what I'm supposed to do. And you just do it. Right. Like, if God tells you to do something. <laughs> I hope you do it. <laughs> so it's just, that is if it's biblical, my <laughs> friends, <laughs> biblical, talk to other Christians. <laughs> there is, you know, validation there. But, you know, it is that, that it really is that. It is just that. It's not for everybody. It might be for you, but you don't know until you try. And then, you know, just make sure that, just like Matthew said, if it's just nerves getting in the way of it, don't let nerves get in the way of God's plan for you. Do it anyway. Keep going, no matter if it's scary, no matter if, you know, you're just not sure about it. That's fine. You know, take those steps. Just keep going no matter what. You'll get there. You know, it might not be to nursing, but at least getting the ball rolling, you'll figure out, oh, maybe nursing isn't it. But then maybe you will, you know, find something else that's kind of adjacent to that. I had a friend in nursing school who decided she did not want to go through the whole nursing program. So she dropped out and she went into social work. Beautiful. You know, but she wouldn't have known that had she not started the nursing program, right? So there's a lot of different, uh, there's a, so many different avenues you can go in life, but we have to start taking the steps. Like God wants us to move in life, right? Keep going, keep taking action, and then he will direct our steps, right? But we have to take that step. We have to keep moving. We have to keep going and just keep listening to him. Just like I said, keep praying about it. Rare gem, yes, thanks for bringing up God in prayer. I could not do this without him. Amen, my friend. It's really important for sure. So that really is a big, big lie is that nursing is for everyone. And it's not. Nursing is not for everyone. To be honest, when I was in nursing school, I had a lot of clinical rotations. It's just not for me. It's just not for me. Like, it's just not, did not fit my personality, was not what I wanted to do you know, but you will find somewhere God will, like I said, direct your path. You will find somewhere that will be a good fit. And it might not be nursing, but it might be nursing. You just don't know. So I recommend that you start. Very good. Uh, adjacent to this a little bit, I wanted to capture Kayla's question too. Uh, I have zero exper healthcare experience. Does healthcare experience help when starting nursing school? Should I be stressed about it like I am? I do not think you should be slightly helpful. At the same time, I think it can be highly detrimental, to be honest with you. I have seen it more go toward the highly detrimental than it is the helpful. So Kayla, honestly... I think it's great <laughs> to be completely honest with you. And here's why I say that. If you are in, if you are in a healthcare setting, especially like in a hospital right now as a tech or a CNA or an LPN or something like that, if you are on the floor and you have so much of this experience <laughs> like you do, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get nursing exam questions right. So if you are coming into nursing school and you have a lot of experience, you are going to bring that experience into your exam with you. And that is not what you want to do. Because nursing exams are going to test you on the textbook answers and textbook scenarios. And if you are coming in with a lot of experience, as you know, patients are not textbook cases, right? So if you're bringing in all these experiences with you, it's going to be difficult for you to choose the right answer on your exams. We see that all the time, seriously, all the time. So Kayla, for you, I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal. Now where healthcare experience can be very, very handy to have when you start nursing school is your ability to interact with patients, with people and assess them, right? Like you have to touch people and do your stethoscope and do your assessment. And, you know, it's that bothers people, you know, that bothers some nursing students. They're not sure how to, you know, how to talk to a patient, you know, and that can be a very difficult bridge to cross. But honestly, in my 
perspective as, you know, as I have been teaching and tutoring nursing students for now years now, what we see most oftentimes is exactly what Renee just said. That's your issue is trying to figure out how to answer nursing school exam questions when you have all this experience in your mind. So Kayla, for you, I honestly don't think it's a big deal. Just make sure that you're practicing getting comfortable with patients and you'll be golden. There you go. So don't let it stress you out. Don't let it stress you out. Don't let that sap your excitement. If that's sapping your excitement, just do it. You're going to start it zap you. Don't let it zap. <laughs> so exactly. <I'm> awesome. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I never, never thought of it that way. Thank you. Can't wait to be an RN. Awesome. Yay! I'm excited for you. And with that, my friends. Okay. So a beautiful. couple, couple things, uh, people at the end here, we're talking about med surge and asking for med surge. We had a really good discussion about med surge at the beginning of this live, which we're wrapping up. So go ahead and go back and take a look at that. Uh, really good information about how to study med surge. Uh -huh. So there are numerous people that have asked about that. Uh, we are not going to be here next week. We will not be here next week for because Christmas. Because it's Christmas. So happy Christmas. Merry happy Christmas, Christmas, I guess, is the term to everyone. We will yeah. see you the week after next. Yes. Uh, what else? Any other? Boot camp. Boot Make camp. sure that you sign up for free. If you have not camp. yet and you want to mm -hmm. learn more about us and by us, boot I mean Christina. Things. And you want boot campy things. How to study in nursing school. I'm going to walk you through that in the boot camp. Nursingschoolofsuccess.com forward slash boot camp. Do it. Register right now because it's so good. Okay. Definitely want to check that out. Um, also, go to YouTube if you are not on YouTube already. A lot of you are watching from YouTube. But if you are on Facebook or Instagram right now, go to YouTube, please, and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell because over the next couple of weeks, we are going to be posting about some very exciting things posting. we have been praying about for the past, my, how long have I been praying about these things? For a long time. And we have just some new things to release to you that we have been secretly working on behind the scenes. Secretly. But the only way that you can see <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. So the only way that you can know about it is if you hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell on YouTube so you do not miss out on those posts that I'm going to make about it. All right. And okay. Renee, if you haven't yet, go ahead and email us. Uh, if you have, then I'm sure Nicole or, or Marilyn will get back to you. I'll. Yep. We can check with them right after this. So. Perfect. All right. All righty, my Take friends. Take care, everyone. We'll see you in a couple weeks. See ya. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.